Hi all, welcome to my vlog 3. Um, until recently I haven't really considered my coaching philosophy, so in this vlog I'll briefly explain how I, be, I became more aware of my own, how I incorporate it into my coaching practice uh, with links to relevant literature, and hopefully uncover key misalignments during the process. Now a starting point for me was a paper back in 2010 that stated that SNC coaches use philosophical thinking skills when designing and implementing programs, um, as it requires thoughtful reasoning uh, to support their case at work. Thus, on reflection, I probably had been implementing my values through this manner, but I hadn't really been fully aware I was doing it. Therefore, I was probably more aware of my training philosophy, so the hows, over my coaching philosophy, the why. The first step in developing my coaching philosophy is understand what coaching philosophy is. Um, the, the, this quote defines it as those beliefs, principles and values that guide behaviour and characterises one's coaching practice, i.e. underpins everything from your coaching methods, your styles, what you prioritise your, and your actions and your behaviours to certain situations. Um, the grade one all stated that it's important to be able to communicate your philosophy in a both a written and verbal form. So I tried to write my own. I used tools of self-reflection and an eight-stage strategy. Also considered life incidences to explore personal values. A lot of the coach education research suggested this is an important practice. Um, this is my final coaching uh, philosophy written out in component parts. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to just focus on those three major um, aspects that I've highlighted. Now, they have kind of fallen into two areas. Um, they are either strengths or key misalignments. So there are actually differences compared to my philosophy and what I do in practice. So I'll explain these a little bit further and linking it to current research. My philosophy, I state that team players need to develop a sense of ownership and responsibility and increase independence. Now, McAllister and Orr and Shari both found that there's major inconsistencies between a coach's philosophy and practice surrounding not giving athletes the opportunities to exercise and learn what these values are. Now for myself, I think in practice I have provided the opportunities in the past um, through implementing ideas, coaching one another, striving towards personal goals, but that was necessarily just to increase variability um, within the program not really focusing on implementing these psychological skills outlined by J. Robinson. I haven't necessarily provided the time um, towards working on these and really thought about it within my programming. So moving forward, I need to consider them potentially in a blocked approach across the cycle or season. Um, but a quote uh, that resonated a lot from that, uh, with me from that case study was that kids learn by doing so. It's the role of the coach to challenge the kids so that it requires hard work and discipline. Now, it's down to the coach, therefore, to create the environment where they're going to work towards these psychological skills and learn what they are. But what that environment looks like for myself in my setting, I'm not too sure, um, but it's something I need to consider moving forwards. Um, the second mis misalignment uh, is centered around me heavily talking about LTAD and adopting an athlete centered approach. Now, a common trait of all coaches um, is care. And when you pair that with uh, adopting this athlete first mentality, you create an environment that encourages commitment to training um, and also sport. Now, when I think I do show care generally through just building rapports with my athletes, um, as I talk about other things apart from just training alone, but I don't think I do it enough. My strongest relationships tend to be with those who've had long term injuries, as those discussions during rehab are a little bit easier. Um, so, moving forward, I think I need to make more of a conscious effort to show this, you know, level of care in the sense of building a rapport um, and a stronger rapport. But um, when I think about the barriers for why I haven't done it today, is probably to the fact that I'm generally working with larger groups, so I need to figure out how I'm going to do that. And equally, the fact that I've got uh, I had a self-perceived stress of chasing short-term results as I first came into the into a role, um, and I've only come to realise since self-reflecting for this vlog, which is another inconsistency, as in my philosophy of personal development, I regularly self-reflect. So moving forward, I need to re self-reflect more regularly. Uh, build stronger rapports um, and look to adopt this mentality a little bit more. Where there is a strong congruence to my coaching philosophies, my everyday coaching actions, decisions and uh, behaviours as they emulate my values, the coach is seen as a significant individual in determining the life lessons and skills learned by use through participation um, as they readily internalise behaviours they've witnessed. So I consistently try to construct an environment that has an unwritten code of conduct and expectations that follow the same values I hold closely. Um, that same environment creates um, consistent behaviours which promotes a positive learning environment as athletes learn to believe in the coach first before they believe in themselves. In conclusion, I've developed an awareness of my own coaching philosophy. I've identified key misalignments to practice um, and how that relates to my practice in reference to uh, relevant literature. And I've also understood that this is a fragmented approach and it's not optimal for learning. It's something I need to work towards in the coming future.